to say something. Um, the, night, the night of the People of the Year Awards, you know, um, I was, do I was down, at the, down at the back of the hall and, and, and Leo walked in and I was talking to this girl and I don't even know what her name was now again, but I said, I'm going to have to go over to him. And so she said, you're not. And I said, I am. And I went over and I said, Leo, what are you going doing about the money message? I, well, no, actually, first I said, hello, I'm Vera. Nice to meet you. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 you even said that. And uh, I said, what are you going to do about the money message? And, and what, what are you going to do about the legislation for medical cannabis? And uh, he turned his shoulder in, into my face and like, I, like that right now I was at this side he put his hand out and he said that, that bill is completely flawed it's going nowhere oh my God. what? that's what he said to me yeah. and you know something it's just like what Eamon said he, he tried to make me feel small but the point being is now because my daughter is seeing the, these results with medical cannabis oil, she's now going to be called and, and labelled as a criminal. Why should my daughter be labelled as a criminal? Because she wants to seek uh, alternative routes to, that may be contrary to her consultants. Um, and she wants to try and give her own little fight there and, and, and make her life any way better. Why should she be? Why should she be now targeted as a criminal? Um, so I have a big issue with this right now, to be honest. And um, I don't think it's very fair. And I don't think it's very fair that people in this room are 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 being basically criminalised because of the use of medical cannabis oil. So obviously. There's only one way forward for me and my daughter right now, and that's Gino Kelly's bill. Yeah. 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 I, I, I heard Simon Harris himself say that it's available on compassionate grounds. Hmm. Now, if Kenny Klein's case is not compassionate grounds, then yeah. I don't know what is. Yeah. To be fair, like, what, what, what constitutes compassionate grounds? A man with a brain tumour who's trying to live. If, if you can't have compassion over something like that, then you're, you don't belong in government. It's a simple yeah. fact. Yeah. Morgan, another guy who's a, kind of an advocate uh, for medical cannabis because it got him through. You were talking about putting weight on when you're when you're in within your real trouble where you need to get your weight on, and uh, so these are all real issues. And I only wanted to just I'm only really adding a voice that everybody has to come out, you know. So they're not the leader. They're not the leader out here to the programs. Everybody has to be seen. And we've seen, and we've had your picture taken in the long for leader with your name underneath it, and everybody's got to come out just like it's a. Uh, you know, all we're doing is evolving here. You know, this is evolution, yeah. and it's been, it's actually happened. It's happened in quite a few European countries before, uh, before Ireland, and Ireland is playing really slow catch up here, and they need to cop yourselves on, and everybody get behind a movement here. You've got an amazing front, uh, front t t table here of people that are, can all speak so eloquently and real passion behind what is a, a very, very straightforward uh, idea and a principle that uh, this is medicine, and so make it medicine, and uh, make it you know, make it happen. Well done. So we marshaled ourselves. We didn't stop traffic once, and everything ran like clockwork. And everyone went home. And we got some footage, and we got some photos, we got some video, we got some audio. But the national media were missing. And I think the national media are missing again here tonight. Okay, we have one. So what everyone does now is that we are the media. If you have a Facebook account, if you have a YouTube account, if you have a Twitter account, an Instagram, these people. It takes an awful lot for them to come. Vera Toomey left her, her, her family that she's just engaged with back again after six months of torture as hell. And that, that's it, her, game, her, her fight is won. The game is over. She's won. No. She's up here for uh, Kenny on Sunday. She's up here for Hazel tonight. She shouldn't have to be going anywhere. Uh, the whole, everything, the point is to be put in lockdown. Everyone has a story to tell. So we need to get it to the Lister house. Tomorrow or next day, as soon as possible. This momentum is 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 is, is at where it's at. It can't go anywhere. We need to keep it going, folks. It, 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 it's all about us.
because we could be affected by what these guys have been affected for. And they're fighting for us. Vera Tooley has won our fight, but she still wants to fight for us. Yeah. For, you know, come on! If she's doing it, we have to do it. So it is all about people power. So do it! Let's come on! I don't like I wanted medical cannabis uh, as a treatment after surgery uh, when, to treat the recurrence and um, I uh, made the decision after talking to Vera um, uh, to uh, go to uh, the Calapa Clinic in um, uh, Barcelona. Um, I, I, had an, uh, over the, I, I had a Skype consultation with them and um, after that consultation, um, and they, they reviewed my medical records. They had seen me fit um, for um, uh, medicinal cannabis treatment and given me a prescription for 10% THC and 10% uh, CBD. Um, I had to take them under, I, I took them as uh, drops that came to come in a little bottle and, um, with drops and, and uh, uh, I. I uh, worked my way up from six drops to 15 drops three times a day. And um, during those three months away in Spain, um, I, I was by myself for most of it. Um, my dad came out with me for the first two weeks because he, uh, he thought I'd be all over the shop uh, from the THC. But uh, he said that there was no bother on me. Um, uh, the only thing he'd done was make me snore, so he just had to <laughs> turn up the air conditioner a little bit more. <laughs> um, but. Uh, during my time in Spain, I was able to uh, walk several kilometers per day. I was out every day in the sun. Um, I was able to reduce um, my medication. Um, I, was, I was going out to Spain, I was taking 15 tablets a day. And um, uh, when I was returning from Spain, I uh, was t down to five tablets a day. So um, I think I, I, I put all that down to um, medicinal cannabis as well. Whether it's your friend, whether they're your partner, whether it's somebody that you just met tonight. Think about their situation. If you woke up tomorrow and seen them in this chronic pain, how would you feel? How would you feel? Would it break your heart? Honestly, it would. I watched my brother, I heard my brother died out in a foreign country and he never came home and it broke my heart. When Kenny went out to Spain, I pissed on him on Facebook every freaking day. Come home to your family. I want you home. I got on main, mainstream Facebook in that loan. I went down to Bundorn. I went all around any place I could just to get his name out there so those people would listen. He shouldn't have to do that. Mary Tony's daughter shouldn't have had to do that. Nobody should have it. When you are sick, the first people that should be at your side is your family. I don't care about anybody else. If you haven't got them, then you have nobody. And that's the way I look at it. And in this room, I have my wife down there. I have my friends down there. And I can guarantee you, if my kids woke up this morning and said to me, Daddy, I'm sick, I've got a brain cancer, can we get this treatment? I would bend over backwards. That's and I would go and check out with all my cards and fight for them too. Because that's all we want, is our kids to live and for them to be happy. And Kenny, I want to see him raise his family. And yep. Vera Tooney's daughter, I've seen her faces on Facebook, and I've seen the work you've done, and I'm delighted to say that child has a quality of life. Yeah. Every yeah. child should have that quality of life. Take him into this world, they're innocent. They've done nothing wrong. Why should they be classed as tournaments? Yeah. Why? Ask yourself, are they faceless people? No, they're human beings. Yeah. Human beings need to be saved. Lives need to be saved. So I'm gonna say this, Simon says, they this and that. Yeah. In, in, in his case, they I mean, they've taken his medicine away, and that's uh, that's not acceptable. Yeah. That's not acceptable. Nice. This is like this is a situation where um, it's almost a human rights issue. Um, yeah. 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 And we'll, yeah. we'll back Kenny, I'll try to bring her up on tours to Kenny, into the doll, yeah. where um, it's made the, the, yeah. to understand and all that, um, and we'll keep, we'll keep fighting. Uh, and as I said, the three strands of this are, you know, people power, yeah. which has brought us to this kind of point, uh, which I don't think there's anything, any going back. I know it's a slow, slow process, <coughs> but there is no going back. Yeah. Um, the medical community and the political kind of community as well. 
I mean, TDs are open to the idea. Um, this bill that I put forward, uh, it would have been yeah, about a year and a half ago, it's the only bill that has gone twice to the doll floor and twice on both occasions it has, uh, by a majority of TDs, uh, they've said that it should progress to the next stage. So if this bill progresses, then it gets amended and then it gets you know, legislated for because then the chill factor will be gone, you know, because most doctors, they're saying, look at, I'm not really going near this because, you know, I'm prescribing a schedule one drug, it's a non-authorized medicine. Yeah. So they're not really, you know, and then it's under license. The licensing system, um, even though the seven being prescribed uh, by the minister, he's not prescribing it, it's the doctor prescribing it. That system is a very kind of laborious and very bureaucratic system. It's a kind of case per case. Yeah. So for the large majority of people that are in chronic pain, it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, get a license. Just on one other point about the reason why this bill has been stalled. The, one of the, ma the main reasons why it's been stalled is because of political reasons, right, by the government. Yeah. Um, and they have proposed a cannabis access programme. And this came out of about 14 months ago from the Health Products Regulation Authority. Out of their recommendations, they said there should be a programme called the Cannabis Access Programme. Uh, it sounds good, uh, but when you kind of look into it, it's not that great. Um, and it proposes three, three, only three conditions where somebody can't be prescribed <coughs> cannabis. That's um, epilepsy, um, uh, spasticity, spasticity with multiple sclerosis, and the side effects of chemotherapy. So this was proposed 15 months ago, and nothing, nothing has happened. Absolutely zero. And um, if, if, and it's not, you know, it's not a case of my name being on the bill. That's that's the least important thing. The most important thing for us as people here is that people get access to this medicine. Yeah, that's all absolutely. it is. If the government yeah. wants to take our bill and say, look, at 90% of that we don't want, but we'll take 10% of it, but give people access to it and give people, you know. You know, freedom of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we that's what we want. And we said, I said this to Simon Harris many times. It's not about the bill. It's about take, you know, what you want to see from the bill, and give um, people access. So look, that's the battle that we're up against. Um, and I think it's a battle we are going to win. Um, and we are. It's like it, it can be as it is tough at times. But the personal testimonies of people. Not only in this room, um, are the driving force what like uh, like the driving force that have been lifting this campaign, because like Vera's um, story with her family, it's an unbelievably powerful narrative. It's incredible. Like you could, like like politicians can stand up um, in the dull, but the narrative of a mother and her daughter, or the likes of Kenny, you know, fighting you know for his condition. That's an unbelievably powerful narrative. I tell you, that's incredibly <coughs> powerful. And that's what we need to kind of keep saying to TDs and the powers that be, look, at, this is not going to go away. We want um, choice and we want um, access to this medicine. It's not a cure-all by any means, but surely people have at least kind of uh, a choice and an option of trying to use this medicine. Where conventional medicine has failed them, yeah. Sometimes it's conventional medicine that's failing them, but now they want to get access to this medicine and stop being criminalised. So we'll keep, we'll keep fighting on. If anybody has any questions, I'm willing to answer them. Thanks very much. Um, just in relation to the speed at which the laws can be changed, I don't know if anybody else knows about it. A couple of years ago, there was one day that they realised where drugs, mm. ecstasy, MDMA were all legal for a day. Yeah. And that was changed instantly, in a day. Yeah. Mm. To rectify the situation. So this business, of, this business of holding up a bill to, to, to stop it from progressing is just political game play. You know, yeah. we're being played. We're being they're playing us for fools. And um, Vera was talking about making phone calls, ringing your TDs. Yeah. They've got offices as well. Yeah. Go into their offices. They hold clinics. Go in and plague them, torture them, tell them that you want this changed, and and they listen when they get tortured long enough. Yeah. That's.